Hi and welcome to the channel. Now as I'm winding it down, just one or two more videos to bring. Uh, this is just a video that I had one question on, just the one question, but I thought it was well worth uh, doing a very quick video about it. It's, uh, I think when I've done a review of this video, someone asked how to change the main supply voltage. Uh, you know, obviously 240 volts here in the UK-ish. Uh, some people may say 230. Uh, I won't go down to 220 on the voltage input, but uh, obviously this, this particular model is a Sansui AU101. And uh, if we just have a look at the back here, the voltage selector is at the back here, and it does 100 volts, 117 volts, 220 volts, and 240 volts. And someone just asked how to change that. And, and to be honest, it's, it's fairly straightforward. But uh, if you don't know and you're a bit wary, then obviously, uh, you know, uh, this video may come in handy. It's very simple on this one. Now, this particular voltage selector is on the back. Uh, in your particular amplifier may have it inside or your receiver may have it inside. Uh, and your receiver or amplifier may not even have one. Uh, it depends, uh, you know, if it's a multi-voltage one uh, or if it's just a straight voltage for that, you know, one particular region, one particular country kind of thing, uh, then it's just going to have the one voltage maybe. Um, right, so on this one, like I say, we've got a choice here. So I'm going to sh show you how to change it. The best bet, like I say, is to find out where your one is, if it does it and where it is. And the best bet for that is to probably go to iFi Engine, uh, the website iFi Engine, and uh, download the service manual if you can find it. There's, there's plenty of service manuals there. I'll be surprised if you can't find it. Uh, you'd be a bit unlucky, but uh, you may be able to find it somewhere else on the internet and find out if your uh, it's got this uh, voltage selection on it, if not, and whereabouts it is, if it's on the back or if it's actually inside the amplifier. Like I say, this, this little bit here could actually be tucked away on a board inside the amplifier, so you would have to open it up. So for this one here, it's just literally a screw to undo this little bracket that's holding it on. So if I just do that, there you go. So we just unscrew that. Obviously, make sure this amplifier is turned off. I'm just going to repeat that again. When doing this, just make sure the unit is turned off and unplugged from the wall. So turn it off and unplug it from the wall. Just make sure you do that before you start mucking about. Or you may cause yourself some damage and obviously the amplifier some damage. As you can see, it's a little bit dusty. But it's pointing, hopefully you can see that, it's pointing to 240 volts. So if we wanted to change that, we just pull that out. And if we want to do 117, we just move it across to the arrow points to 117. And just push it back in there, like so. A little bit stiff, because it hasn't probably been in them sockets. But there you go, 117 volts. It's uh, done for now. It's uh, right up to run off 117 volts. And if we wanted to take it down to, say, the 220, which I wouldn't advise. We're going to come in a minute and actually start measuring my voltage on my mains. But uh, yeah, so all we've got to do is have that arrow line up, push it in there tight, so it lines up to the 220 at the bottom, and the same again for 110. And you'll do that with your one if it was inside, just you know, have an arrow on it, or you have some kind of description on that service manual of whereabouts to put it. So read it very, very carefully, and uh, make sure you go over it a few times because you don't want to muck it up because there's uh, just one wrong position, and turn it on, and all of a sudden you could end up frying your amplifier so on this particular amplifier i'm going to leave it at 240 i'm going to put this little clip back on so once you've done that uh, put the clip back on to hold it nice and tight now one other thing you could do is you can see i've got a fuse on the outside here just to screw this up and i come to the fuse you could make sure that is in don't overdo this just nice and tight just there i just had a slight and that's it don't overdo it just so it's got a grip there and it's a little bit of pressure to continue anymore because you overdo it you could actually maybe that fuse inside it's only a glass fuse if i take it out or undo that and show you let's say just say what you may want to do on the fuse on the outside there's a the glass fuse if you over tighten it some of them have got a little spring in this one hasn't you may actually squash that fuse and make it pop so just be a bit careful but you may just want to tighten that up to make sure it's nice and tight that way you've got a good contact now this may not be on the outside here this may actually be on the circuit board inside and you may have to actually lift it off off the circuit board you may have a couple of spring clips or something holding it in position uh you may just have to lift it up and you can push them clips together just a little bit and put the fuse back in so it's got a nice tight connection obviously you could take this out now what a lot of people do is once they've done the mains voltage uh, they actually take this fuse out either from here or the circuit board and replace it with a brand new one because these are old this is probably 50 years old may just have a little bit of noise on it something like that. may not just be having a proper 100 percent connection this does happen over time you know the uh, turning the amplifier on and off on and off on and off on and off all the time just you know just that little bit of a surge kind of thing with the electric 
it can make these fuses just go a little bit brittle maybe and sometimes it just pops them sometimes it, you know they actually pop they break uh, and you have to replace the fuse even though there's nothing wrong with the amplifier it's just the rep sudden little surges on and off on and off they just get a little bit on the brittle side don't forget these are 50 years old and that goes for the ones that's inside on the board as well you may want to change them but uh, a lot of people really don't want to take the lid off be very careful you do take the lid off uh, like i say make sure it's all turned off uh, but if you can get access to the outside now this has got 240 or 220 now some of them have got 240 230 uh, which one should you have it on? Well, that's, that's entirely up to you, really. But uh, what I'm going to do is actually test the voltage of my mains. And I'm not going to get the meter. Let's just grab the meter. I'm not going to get the meter and just stick these two probes in the socket in the wall mains. There's no need for me to do that with this particular amplifier. If you've got an amplifier like this, it's got a switched or unswitched uh, outlet on it. There's a switch and unswitched. So this unswitched means that as soon as I plug this in, the voltage whatever it is on my mains will be coming out of here so if my mains for instance is 240 volts 240 volts have come out of here without me even turning the amplifier on i would have to turn the amplifier on then the 240 volts will come out of here as well so what i'm going to do i'm going to get my meter uh, i'm going to hold it like that so you can see what it is and all i'm going to do is i'm going to with it turned off don't forget make sure this is turned off it doesn't matter which way around you do it it's just push me two probes into that switch like so now, last time I did this, uh, which is ages ago now, when I first moved it, it was about 237 volts. So that's why I put it on 240, just in case it peaks a little bit and keeps it, you don't want it on 230, it's just 7 volts too low, really. So let's have a look. I want to plug this in. Uh, be very careful when you do this. Uh, maybe your best bet is just to leave the meter laying on top, something like that, and taking the reading and unplug it and taking the bits out. If you wanted to do this, and make sure you don't short anything out and you've got your meter on the right reading. My one's 750 volts AC. So it's something maybe you don't want to do. So you may just want to be a, maybe, you know, just, I don't know, just take it, you know, just um, side with the 240 volts. This is what I'm trying to get at. Maybe it's just side with the 240. Because I think, you know, it's supposed to be 230, 240, somewhere around there. So if you go 240, you, you, you've edged on a on caution and you, you're not really, you know, the amplifier ain't losing much power at all. Just a very, very small percentage of power probably lost, if anything. So uh, anyway, we're going to plug this in, if I can find the plug. Oh, we've got it all set up. So here we go. Just double check. And it's on there. Now I'm going to hold this meter up here. And uh, hopefully you can see that. Now, I'm just going to leave it fluctuate just a little bit. But it does fluctuate. It did it 240, I think, a minute ago. 237. 239. So when I did it last time, it was about 237 when I checked, which was a while ago now. But that can slightly differ here and there. But there you go. It's quite a you know, solid reading now. So that's why I've got it set at 240 volts, this particular amplifier. Now I'm going to turn this off just in case I forget to when I finish the video. I'm going to electrocute myself. So let's unplug that. I've definitely unplugged the right one. We can double check that. The voltage has gone down to zero. So I'm going to take this out. Now you can get mains filters if you wanted to. That's going to kind of smooth out your mains. So any peaks in it would just slightly smooth it out. There's plenty of them about on the internet to buy different sites, all that kind of thing. But I'm just going to give a little plug here to uh, Jim Jim's Riga Turntable iFi Jukebox. Now, a friend of his did post up, his friend's called Tweaker Man. Uh, he posted up a little uh, DIY project there. So I'm going to leave links to both of them, to Jim's channel, as well as Tweaker Man's channel in that particular video, uh, where you could build one yourself if you're that way inclined and you think you can do it. Uh, just involves a bit of uh, electrical work. Uh, you may fancy doing that yourself, but that kind of like suppress it and uh, keep the mains smoother and get rid of some of them peaks that can kind of come along them spikes now and again. So hopefully that's helped. Maybe some people want to change this mains voltage uh, supply. And like I say, just, just maybe just go slightly above what your on is. I won't go below, uh, just go slightly above. And if you can measure your on, that's great. If you can't, then maybe just try and find out off the internet or uh, somewhere, uh, maybe your local power station or something like that, what your actual power uh, into your home is. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.